This video is sponsored by Squarespace, making the daunting task of building a website really easy. So I bought a bike. That's right guys, I pulled the trigger on an all titanium bike, the Bear Claw Thunderhawk. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about why I did it, some aspects of the build, some things I like and dislike about it now that I've had it for a couple weeks. And probably more importantly, has it lived up to my expectations of being the ultimate Thai gravel bike? I originally reviewed the Bear Claw Thunderhawk uh, a couple years ago, and it was a bike that I really wanted to hold on to at the time, but I could not justify it. It was expensive. I just recently purchased the crust. And geometry wise, the crust Bambora and the Bear Claw are actually fairly similar. So I let go and shipped it back to Michigan. But at the back of my mind, I knew that eventually I would probably buy it if I could. Why this tie bike as opposed to some other tie bike? There are many makers on the market. There's Moots, there's Firefly, there's Ericsson. What really set this bike apart for me is actually the fork. I mean, if you're gonna buy a Thai bike, like buy a Thai bike, have the whole thing Thai. For me, the fact that this has a Thai fork is super intriguing. It's not something that you see a ton of. One of the things that really drew me to this Thai fork as opposed to going with a carbon fork is that it erases any doubt about whether I can put a front rack uh, on this fork or not. To me, that's one of the, the downsides of a carbon fork. Many of them not rated to take uh, even a random rack and a basket setup, but this, because it's an alloy, it's titanium, I can rack this up to my heart's content and not worry about it. Another reason is I really want to have more time with the fork. Is it truly noticeably different from a really nice steel fork? I really wanted the time to be able to compare this front end with the Crest Bombora and even the Rivenel to see if I could discern some difference between having a tie fork and a steel fork. Beyond the frame material, there's other aspects of this bike that I like. It's got really good tire clearance. Currently I have it set up with 26 by 2.3 inch tires and it has room to spare in the front. I could probably go a little bit fatter up here if I wanted to. This bike has the flexibility to be set up with a 26 inch wheel set or 650B or 700 by 28. So if I was gonna spend the money, I wanted as much uh, flexibility with the bike as possible. Another thing I really liked about this bike is the geometry. I alluded to the fact that it was really similar to the Crust Bambora, and that is one of the reasons why I like it. This is the latest version, and it's actually been tweaked a little bit. The one I tested had a 428 chain stay. This one's 430. Not a huge deal, but it's definitely tipped over more towards that kind of all-rounder geometry. In the front end, the trail is in the high 60s, uh, depending on what wheel and tires I have in here. So even with the 26 by 2.3 inch tires, the bike is still fairly nimble. The trail falls in the upper end of the endurance road bike category, slightly on the stable side, but still fairly responsive and doesn't exhibit much wheel flop or drunken goatiness on slow climbs. Before we get into the build, which I think is an interesting mix of lowbrow and eccentric parts, but seems to work really well on this bike. Let me tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Speaking of building, they make building websites ridiculously easy. You guys know me, I'm a literature major, not so good with the maths and the science and the coding. So when I wanted to build a new website for a side project, I turned to Squarespace and it was ridiculously easy. I made the website over a weekend. I use Squarespace to purchase the domain, pick out a theme, change the theme up so it better suits the content I'm gonna show, put in galleries with my artwork and a place to shop, and even a contact page where people can reach out about commissions. Usually you'd have to code that kind of stuff, but with the really easy tools that Squarespace has, it was a breeze, even for a lit major like me. So if you wanna build a website quick and easy, definitely check out Squarespace. And when you're ready to go live, visit the URL below to get 10% off your first purchase off a domain or a website. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. When I purchased the frame, I had Bear Claw do a partial assembly. So they cut down the steerer tube, uh, pressed in the cups for the headset, and also installed the cranks. But everything else was up to me, and I had to be a little bit creative. So I got the performance and the, the range I wanted out of the bike without spending too much more money because the frame and fork was kind of on the spendy side. So first off, the brakes. These are the Yokozuna Ultimos and Motoko hybrid cable uh, hydraulic disc brake. The calipers have a reservoir with some hydraulic stuff, literature major, but they're actuated by good old fashioned cables. 
I really like the stopping power of these brakes as well as the feel. Probably the closest hydraulic feeling brake in the lever without going full on hydraulic. And those brakes are connected to some pretty simple uh, Tektro brake levers. I think these cost 25 bucks. And I have those mounted to the Redshift kitchen sink handlebars. They're pretty similar to another handlebar I really like, the Ritchie Venture Max, but it's pretty close. It has the width I want and the drops aren't so deep that I don't ever use them. You guys will notice this strange metallic thing. This is the uh, Swood T-Rack. Uh, I'm not gonna go, go into it in this video because I have a whole nother video talking just about this one part. So check that out over here-ish. Next part I'm gonna talk about will definitely raise some eyebrows, probably upset some people I'm, that I'm pairing such a cheap part on such a nice frame. And that is the humble friction shifter. This is a 10 speed uh, micro shift bar and shifter. Simple, reliable, inexpensive, works with any rear derailleur that I may want to set up in the future. Is it as convenient as shifting from the brifter? No, but for the riding I do where, you know, I can take my time shifting, you know, I'm not doing a field sprint or anything like that. More than adequate and I totally love it. You'll notice that I routed uh, the housing under the tape so you don't have that big lazy loop here. It doesn't interfere with any bags. It does make the cable run a little bit longer. So in putting the shifter here, I did have to find a tandem shifter cable just to make up for that extra length. In terms of cranks, I originally wanted a, a Carbon Force one by in the front, but they were pretty scarce. So the folks at Bear Claw put on a GRX one by Standard GRX only comes with a 40 tooth as the smallest chain ring that you could put on there. And for me, that drives me absolutely nuts because I really want a lower gear than the 40 tooth can get me. So I swapped it out uh, fairly immediately with a chain ring from Wolf Tooth. And Wolf Tooth, thankfully, they make some aftermarket chain rings that work uh, with GRX. So if you want something smaller than the 40, they've got a 38. They launched a 36 uh, a couple weeks ago and it's sold out. So clearly a demand here. And so far I've been pretty happy with it. Uh, at first I thought that it would be way under geared that I would find myself spinning out a, a lot more often than I do. It is on the low side and it's not for everybody. But if you like to ride up mountains and, and carry stuff, and don't mind just kind of tucking in when you're descending, then, this, then the 36 will probably work out pretty well. For the rear derailleur and the cassette, I reuse parts I, I had laying around, and it is the Advent X rear derailleur and 10-speed cassette. The cassette is 11 to 48, and it's remarkably light given you know how much metal is there. The, the rear derailleur with the cassette and the bar and shifter just works beautifully. For me, I'm not super sensitive to cadence, so I don't need like a super tight cluster or anything. I'd rather have the range to make sure I have enough low gearing to, to climb the stuff out here while carrying stuff. I like it. You get the durability of a 10 speed chain. It's really simple and works well with the bar end shifter. So let's talk wheels and tires. I am using two wheel sets for this bike. One is a 650B uh, wheel set. But let's talk about this guy. This is the 26 inch uh, wheel set. The, the rims are Stan's Barons, so I believe they're 35 millimeter interior, which is definitely on the wide side. They're laced to Stan's Neo hubs. Uh, I actually bought the wheel set used from the folks over at Crest Bike. I wanted a wheel set that could move between the different bikes in my stable, so these would work with the Crest Bimbora as well. Moving on to the tires. Uh, these are Hum Tulips by Rene Erse. 26 inch by 2.3, this is the endurance casing. I thought 650B was supple, but whoa, these tires, something else. Uh, I'm actually gonna do a whole series of videos comparing 650B versus uh, 26 inch and talking about these tires specifically. So look out for those videos. So that's the build. I think it's an interesting contrast. You've got a really nice kind of blingy frame, but very down to earth, you know, reliable, no nonsense parts. There's definitely a lot that I like about this bike, clearly that's, I mean, why I bought it. But there is one thing that sort of bugs me about the frame and I knew this purchasing it, but went for it anyway. For some, it's not gonna bug you and it might be even a feature that you want. But for me, it wasn't really hot on it. And that is that it's internally routed. I like bikes and things that are really easy to maintain. And I think by going internally routed, it just made it that much trickier to set up and potentially change parts out in the future. When it shipped, it did have these coat hanger things coming out of the hole, so they acted as guides. And that worked for most of the cables, but there were a couple that were really tricky and I had to employ all sorts of weird tricks, like using floss and the shop vac and basically luck. I know it looks neat. I know some of you are really into internal routing, but wasn't a fan. 
Honestly, not a fan. One hole in particular that probably caused the most ire was the exit hole for the rear brake. For the Yokozunas to work really well, uh, they really benefit from, from using a stiffer compressionless housing. And if you look at the exit hole of the bike, that bend leaving the, the frame and kind of turning back inwards towards uh, the brake, really tricky to set up. I had a hard time fishing the housing through and then making this really awkward bend with a super stiff hose was not the best experience. So I don't know if that exit hole is kind of optimized for hydraulic disc brakes, but it sort of sucked using it with the uh, Yokozunas. I kind of wish that the hole was on top of the chainstay rather than off to the side and also a little bit further back from the brake caliper just so I could have a more gentle bend into the caliper. It's, it's really nitpicky, I know, and if you have someone else you know, build up the frame for you, then you probably won't even notice. But I decided to do it myself and that was kind of, it took me about an hour to do, just that one cable run. I've, I've had the bike for a couple weeks and it's been really smoky, but I did take it with us to our trip out to central Washington and got some pretty good rides in it. Lots of climbing on some steep stuff with kind of red, redded dirt roads and also descending. So I feel like I've gotten a good sense of how this bike is gonna ride in the future. Although the chainstay length got nominally longer on this iteration of the Thunderhawk, didn't really notice it. It still was pretty playful, still really responsive out of the saddle. I love the lightness of this bike. With a 26 inch wheel set, uh, the bike weighs in at 23 pounds. When I swap in a 660B alloy wheel set, that drops to about 22 and a half pounds. The carbon wheel set would get this to the 22 pound mark. And I, and I think that's pretty good, all things considering there's no carbon crank, not particularly weight weenie components. And the bike is super smooth. Fully admit it could be due to the tires as well. That's why I'm gonna swap in a 650B uh, wheel set at some point just to see you know, how much is this smoothness coming from the frame as opposed to the wheel and tires uh, that are on it. But so far, an absolute joy to ride. Responsive to standing and climbing and, and quick accelerations, but buttery smooth going down the chunky stuff. And ultimately that's the thing I, I really like about this bike. Its geometry isn't necessarily radical or, or mind-blowingly different from other bikes out there, but it's a great execution of that kind of endurance road slash gravel bike geo. And it happens to be all tie. So you get the benefits of lightweight, but also strength and kind of just a nice buttery smoothness to it. So yeah, I'm super stoked on this bike. I might tweak a few more components, but I think it's mostly at its finished form. What do you guys think of my build? Is it nuts to have such a nice frame and have bar in friction shifters? What do you guys think of the 26 inch wheel and tires? Let me know what you want to know about going 26 inch. And as always, keep the supple side down.